Hi everyone, this is uh, lecture 7 of uh, the Engineering Mathematics course from the University of Notre Dame. So today we'll continue, uh, summarize a little bit of things we have discussed before on uh, vector spaces and subspaces. Uh, some uh, review, brief review of uh, the column space, and then I will um, uh, reiterate some of the things we could not finish on uh, the previous lecture on how to compute solutions of the null space. So hopefully by this lecture, uh, those topics will make some sense and you will be able to do the homework that is due next week. Okay, so um, the uh, lectures, basically the contents will include, as I mentioned, uh, some reviews of uh, vector spaces. I will uh, explain again with some examples what subspaces uh, take the particular example of a column space and discuss uh, what is all that about, and uh, then continue with the null space and computing the solutions of the null space in uh, an automated fashion using ideas basically directly coming from the matrix elimination process that we have seen uh, before, but somehow in a way that uh, is going to be a little bit more automated. And uh, I will uh, conclude with... Uh, a few words about uh, a new definition, if you like, equivalent definition of the rank of the metrics. And uh, I will summarize uh, everything we have done up to now with uh, uh, matrix elimination. All right, so a few things about vector spaces. I'm not going to repeat uh, things. I will just um, um, emphasize some key points and uh, give some examples here and there. All right, so uh, the most familiar vector space that we're going to work is obviously R to the nth. Uh, this is the vector space that uh, contains vectors with um, n components that we consider to be real number. That's what uh, R to the nth means. Uh, and the whole idea of the key idea of the vector spaces is basically if you have two vectors V and W from that space, uh, the uh, and you take constant C and W, the linear combination C, V plus W is also in the vector space. So effectively, if uh, V is in the vector space, two V is in the vector space, minus two V is in the vector space, V plus W is in the vector space, V plus two W, uh, etc. And the most important uh, thing of the uh, this particular vector space is that the zero point also is part of the vector space. So you can think of taking C equal to W, I'm sorry, C equal to D equal to zero. So that will give you uh, the zero vector. Uh, if the zero vector is not in, um, uh, in the space that we're referring to, then this is not a vector space. Now, the most trivial vector space, of course, is a vector space that uh, contains only the uh, zero element and uh, the notation actually we use uh, in these notes and in uh, Professor Strang's book, uh, we use this calligraphic Z to indicate uh, a vector space that contains only uh, the element zero. And of course, you know, try to use the concept of uh, when I say vector space in a very liberal sense. So vector uh, doesn't have to be an array of uh, n numbers, can be uh, matrices, can be functions, uh, can be anything uh, that you like to envision. The only constraint, again, is that it has to satisfy the, the basic assumptions uh, that we use uh, in the definition of the, uh, of the vector space, in particularly that uh, when you take linear combination of elements, they have to be in the space uh, uh, again. So the space basically it's closed under the operation implied by the statement uh, two. All right. Um, so uh, what is a subspace now? A subspace is basically it's a vector space on its own, uh, but it's part of a bigger vector space. So you can think if you're looking at the uh, vector space in n dimensions uh, and you take a line, uh, that line is uh, a subspace of Rn, uh, the only constraint, and we will see examples. This line we have to pass through the zero point because the subspace needs to satisfy uh, the same identical properties 
that the vectors in the vector space uh, itself satisfy. So, you know, this um, linear combination that we referred uh, here it has to be true for the subspace. So, which means the zero point has to be on the subspace. So if you look on in three dimensions in R3, and you take a plane that doesn't pass from the origin or a line that doesn't pass in the origin, they look like subspaces, but actually they don't follow the definition and they are not subspaces. The column space uh, is uh, a very important uh, uh, subspace. So if you have a matrix M by N and you take uh, the space that uh, is defined by combinations, linear combinations of the columns, then uh, what you form is a subspace of uh, the M-dimensional RM space. So again, uh, this is for a matrix M by N. The column space is a subspace of RM. Uh, so uh, this is very important because you remember when... Uh, uh, if you try to look for solutions of a linear system AX equal B, uh, immediately you know that AX is a combination of the columns. So it's in the column space that tells you that if you want to find a solution to AX equal B, the only way that AX equal B will have a solution is if B is um, in uh, the column space of A. Okay, that's an easy statement to know when you have uh, a solution to this system of equations. Okay, so um, uh, again, we're looking at uh, Rn. So the columns of uh, Ax are uh, linear combinations of the columns of A. Uh, the same is true for the columns of AB. I think we have uh, visited this in, uh, I believe, in lecture four when we talked about matrix multiplication. And um, uh, these are basically the most uh, practical and useful uh, spaces to this and many other courses in, in applied uh, computational mathematics. Uh, R1, R2, uh, this is the plane, the three dimensions, but you know, uh, being able to write uh, statements that are applicable for vectors in Rn is as simple as working in uh, three dimensions. So R5, uh, the notation again here is that uh, we, uh, it contains uh, vectors that uh, are, uh, they have five components, uh, real numbers, and uh, you can think uh, if uh, if this was, let's say, the five components were uh, vectors in uh, the columns of uh, a matrix A, then this will be a subspace of R5. All right, so the subspace Rn consists of all column vectors that have uh, n components. All right, so um, uh, we restricted ourselves to real numbers, but we will see later in the course, if we have enough time, that you can actually operate with uh, vectors that have components that they are complex numbers. So in this case, instead of Rn, we use uh, the space of complex numbers and we indicate this vector space as uh, C uh, to the power N. Um, so, uh, R squared is again the plane, x y plane, has two components. Um, R cubed has three components, and um, uh, R one is uh, simply a line passing through the origin, uh, and it is a subspace uh, of um, uh, uh, of uh, R cube. So uh, let me uh, clarify a little bit uh, these things. So um, you can think of uh, uh, of a vector that has only two components x and y, right? So this is a vector in the space R2, uh, but also you can uh, think of a vector that has three components, uh, x, y, and zero. That's uh, a two-dimensional subspace of the three-dimensional space. So you need to be careful to in which context you're actually referring when you do uh, calculations. Do you use, let's say, uh, a vector with uh, two components? In that case, is a vector in R2. Uh, but if it is a vector with uh, two non-zero components and the third one uh, zero, uh, uh, then uh, this is nothing else but uh, a plane that is passing from uh, uh, the origin. And that plane is a subspace uh, in three dimensions, Okay, even though, in principle, we only work with two dimensions. 
again, the the uh, discussion would be clear uh, from the context on the type of applications we will look. So there will be uh, no confusion on this if we are referring to uh, a plane embedded in three dimensions or uh, uh, a vector basically that uh, is uh, uh, lives in a plane. All right, so some uh, uh, examples of vectors. Uh, this is a vector in two dimensions in R2. This is a vector in uh, R cube. And I remind you the notation here, when you put column vectors inside parentheses, horizontally, you do this to save space. So what you see here is a column vector, it's not a row vector. And here is a, uh, a two-dimensional uh, vector that has complex components. Uh, and uh, this vector belongs to C2. And we will see this uh, type of vectors later on in this uh, in this course. All right. Um, uh, we talked about linear combinations. You know, you can multiply vectors by uh, numbers. Um, you can uh, add vectors. And uh, more generally, you can take uh, linear uh, uh, combinations of the vectors. Uh, so uh, the idea of a vector space, again, is if you take linear combinations of the vectors, the resulting new vectors belong to the same vector space. So the vector space is closed basically under this operation of uh, uh, linear operations. And um, uh, this is formally uh, is uh, shown here. Uh, we have the commutative property that you see here. Uh, v plus W equal W plus V. Uh, and uh, both of these vectors belong uh, to the same vector space, let's say to Rn, uh, where V and W belong. And then we have this uh, property, uh, this distributed property that you see here as uh, well. If you multiply uh, the sum of two vectors by a constant, this is equal to CV plus CW. I pay less attention to uh, this type of uh, properties for uh, vectors because they are sort of more common sense. So if you remember the fundamental two properties that linear combinations, you know, if you multiply a vector with a number, you should get a vector in that space. And if you take a combination of vectors, it should be a vector in that space, then effectively we're covered and properties like the ones that you see here, uh, commutative and distributive properties uh, are uh, uh, less uh, of uh, concern because uh, they are uh, easy to satisfy. Uh, in principle, I'm, I'm actually reminding you, I think from an earlier lecture, maybe lecture three or four, we had seen that in addition to this closed uh, property uh, to, for linear combinations of vectors, there were uh, a number of uh, other properties, about eight properties. And if actually I think uh, they're given in the next slide. So basically this slide summarizes all these common sense properties that we expect the vector space to uh, satisfy. And um, again, um, just that if I can pick up some, um, you know, in that vector space for every vector A, you have a negative A so that their sum is zero. Uh, you define um, uh, the zero vector uh, as the vector that if you add it to any other vector, you get the vector A back. And uh, the rest are just a common sense type of, um, uh, of properties. So you will see less of this uh, checking of these properties because effectively, uh, it is the linear combinations that we need to be sure that they give us vectors in the subspace that we would like to take care of. Okay, um, so let me see what uh, we have here. Uh, so some examples that uh, uh, may not be as familiar. You can have actually a vector space of matrices. So this matrix, uh, this space M calligraphy that you see here is a vector space of uh, two by two matrices. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, you can actually easily check that it satisfies these uh, linear combinations of matrices of two by two matrices are also two by two matrices and all these eight properties that I had uh, before are also satisfied. So this is a valid um, uh, vector space. Obviously, there is a zero matrix, you know, uh, that needs part to be part of uh, this vector space. Uh, and uh, all the other properties are easily to solve. Uh, you can have the vector space of real functions f of x, and we denote this as f. And I think I referred before to 
the simplest possible vector space that only contains a zero vector and we denote this with a calligraphic uh, letter uh, Z. So um, uh, if um, uh, we can uh, uh, show a, a schematic here, this is uh, a schematic. Uh, again, it's up to your imagination of the vector space that involves um, uh, uh, two by two matrices. Uh, this is uh, a four dimensional uh, metric space, right? You have uh, 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 four uh, components. And um, later on, when we discuss about the basis for a vector space, you can see actually to represent any typical uh, ele element in this uh, matrix uh, vector space, you actually, you will need these four basis matrices uh, with one on each of the four sides of uh, the matrix, okay? And uh, and obviously, uh, we need to be sure that the zero matrix is a part of this uh, of this uh, uh, space that uh, uh, of matrices of two by two matrices. Actually, this uh, uh, as weird as they can be, these matrices uh, and many other type of vector spaces beyond your typical vectors are very common in uh, mathematics, but also uh, in applications. Of course, someone may say, if I have a two by two matrix, maybe I can think of this as a vector in uh, four dimensions. Well, you can do this, but in some occasions, uh, it may be easier to maintain the structure of the matrix as you see it here, because uh, if you transform this matrix to a vector, maybe you lose a lot of the machinery uh, that is known with matrices like multiplications of matrices and the like. But remember, when you define a vector space for matrices, uh, there is nothing about matrix multiplication, right? A vector space is linear combinations, that's it. Uh, there is absolutely no operation that has anything to do in that vector space that defines um, uh, multiplication, okay? So, uh, so I'm going to leave it there. So if you want to, to think, um, yeah, that's a little bit uh, different from what we have done with vectors. Okay. Um, so let me uh, see what uh, the subspace is. Basically, it's a bigger space that is inside uh, a vector space. So if you think of the, uh, the RN space, um, you can think of, uh, as I mentioned before, planes that uh, pass through the origin. Um, so uh, uh, a plane uh, is a vector space in R cube, and I tried to emphasize uh, before that in plane in three dimensions is not in R2, right? It's in R3, okay? Uh, uh, so we're looking here as a plane uh, embedded in three dimensions. So if you take uh, any vector in that plane, it has three components, okay? So uh, this is a subspace of our cube, and we're assuming again that uh, these vectors uh, that are defined by a plane passing through the origin, um, uh, you know, uh, they define uh, a subspace of our cube. Okay, so the uh, formally a subspace, a vector uh, of a vector space is a set of vectors that include a zero that satisfy this linear combination property that I saw you before. So if you take two vectors V and W in the subspace, then V plus W is in the subspace. And uh, if you multiply V by any, any constant C, any uh, real number, then C times uh, V is also in the subspace. So if you take basically linear combinations of vectors in the plane, you need to stay on the plane. Okay, that's the, uh, the whole uh, idea here. Uh, the uh, obviously, uh, if W is in the subspace, minus W is in the subspace, because we said any constant times W should give you an element uh, in the subspace. By the way, the rules of uh, addition and multiplication by a scalar that we have seen uh, for vector spaces are, uh, you don't need to define them for a subspace because they are identical uh, to the host uh, vector space uh, that we use to define the subspace. So if we are looking for uh, a subspace of our cube, 
basically whatever properties addition and scale multiplication we had defined in that space would be uh, exactly the same operations that we would use if our subspace, let's say, it's uh, a, pla a plane embedded uh, in uh, three dimensions. And uh, uh, all right, so we, uh, you know, have seen um, uh, that we emphasize that every subspace needs to contain the zero uh, vectors of, uh, if you refer to a plane that doesn't pass through the origin, that is not a subspace. And it's very easy, again, to see this because uh, the origins included uh, because if you multiply a vector on the plane by constant c and that constant c is zero, you get a zero vector. So you need to be sure that the zero vector is part of the subspace. So that's property uh, two, if you remember, uh, that uh, defines uh, explicitly what the subspace is, uh, uh, is all about. All right. Uh, uh, so... Uh, if you, you know, we mentioned planes passing through the origin, similarly lines passing through the origin are subspaces also uh, of uh, R cube. Um, and um, uh, easily you can show uh, that they satisfy all the needed properties. And of course, another subspace of R cube is R cube itself. So if you take the whole space, it's obviously uh, a subspace uh, uh, of itself. Um, and... Um, now, um, uh, and again, always check these uh, rules one and two that you see, uh, you see down here. All right, so let's do the following thing. Let's uh, discuss a little bit about the union of subspaces. So let's say that uh, we are in our cube and we consider one uh, subspace to be a plane that passes through the origin and uh, the other subspace being a line that is passing through the origin. So let's do the following thing. Let's uh, take... Uh, the union of these uh, subspaces. So, uh, so the union basically of two subspaces are all vectors that they are either in P, in the plane P, or they are uh, in uh, the line L, or they are in both P and L. Okay. Now, you can appreciate that in general, if you take two vectors uh, from this uh, union, uh, so let's say you take a vector that is on the plane, and then if you take another vector that is on the line, and the line is not on the plane, okay? So if you take the sum of those two vectors, that sum is not going to be on the plane and is not going to be on the line. And that means that the union of two subspaces is not a subspace, okay? So in general, the union of uh, two subspaces is not a subspace. Uh, uh, I gave you a homework problem basically to prove a few things of the union between uh, two subspaces and also uh, the same homework discusses about the sum uh, of the uh, two subspaces. So the sum will be basically uh, you take uh, uh, the uh, plane that passes through the origin uh, plus uh, the line that passes through uh, the origin. So effectively, uh, this uh, the sum is generated by the combination of all the vectors that they are uh, on the plane and the line. Okay, so that is different from uh, the union of uh, these uh, two subspaces. Again, you would have to work out the differences uh, between the union and the sum of two subspaces in your homework. So I'm going to leave this uh, here uh, as is so you can see the differences. Okay, so let me finish with this. You know, um, ah, you know. so this again about your homework. I said I would not say anything. So the intersection of two subspaces, uh, it is obviously a subspace now. Um, uh, this is not the sum. Okay, so we're safe. This is not the homework. So this is the intersection of two subspaces is a, a subspace because if you take uh, two uh, vectors on this intersection, these vectors belong both to S and T. Uh, so obviously, uh, there uh, you can show that when you take linear combinations of those, the linear combinations will also belong in the intersection of S and T. So effectively, uh, S uh, uh, intersected uh, intersection with T 
uh, forms uh, a subspace. So um, again, if you have uh, uh, a plane passing through the zero, zero, zero origin and a line passing through the origin, and you uh, form the subspace that is the intersection of S and T, the intersection of S and T is basically just the origin. And we already have seen that the origin is one of the fundamental subspaces uh, that we denoted with calligraphic Z of the uh, R cube space. Okay, and um, so in um, uh, finishing up this, uh, we looked at R3, a line passing through the origin, a plane passing through the origin, the whole space, and of course the single uh, vector uh, that uh, has components, uh, um, the origin 0, 0, 0, are all subspaces of, um, of R cube. Okay, uh, let's see a few things that they are uh, not subspaces. So uh, let's start um, with uh, uh, a vector of two components, X and Y, that they are both uh, zero positive. Uh, so if you consider the space of vectors that have components uh, uh, zero or positive, is this a subspace? You can immediately see, you know, if you take, uh, you multiply it, a typical vector that has positive components with a negative number, both of the components will be negative. So obviously, C times uh, a vector U is not going to be in this um, uh, uh, space. So this space is not a subspace uh, and uh, because it violates that rule two that we discussed uh, earlier. Uh, uh, let's do another example. Let's take uh, the uh, vector section of Y, where uh, either uh, both components are positive or both components are negative or zero, okay? So in principle, what we do is we pay, take the space in two dimensions that consists of the uh, two quarter planes where they have the components either positive or, or negative. So here is uh, why this is also not a subspace. Uh, if you... Uh, take a vector V that has components 2 and 3, and a vector W that has components minus 3 and minus 2. They're both valid, right? In uh, V has both positive components, W has negative components. If you add them, what do you get? You get minus 1 and 1, and this uh, vector does not belong in either the positive coordinate um, uh, uh, quarter plane or the negative uh, component quarter plane. So this is violating uh, this uh, uh, rule one uh, that we used to define uh, what a subspace is, is all about. Uh, all right. Um, so again, these are the two fundamental properties. So don't uh, forget this. And um, you can always check them actually uh, all uh, at once and, and uh, by taking uh, directly linear combinations of two vectors rather than applying them uh, separately. All right, so another example. Uh, if you consider this uh, space of two by two matrices, uh, you can think of as valid subspaces, the, uh, the space of uh, upper uh, triangular matrices, right? So obviously, if you take two upper triangular matrices, you multiply them by a constant, you still get an upper triangular matrix. If you get uh, the summation of two upper triangular matrices, you get an upper triangular matrix, so everything is satisfied. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, diagonal matrices. If you add two, you get a diagonal matrix. If you multiply with a constant, you get uh, a diagonal matrix. Um, uh, you can also check immediately that the, uh, the uh, zero matrices uh, are also in both uh, U and, and uh, D. Uh, and of course, you know, I can define um, a subspace of uh, two by two matrices with all components zero, and uh, that is also um, a subspace. Uh, you can even define, if you want, you can define a line of matrices. Um, and um, if I is the identity matrix in uh, two by two, uh, so the line of matrices is basically the matrices a constant time psi, okay? And this line of matrices actually are subspaces of M, uh, subspaces of U, and subspaces of the diagonal matrices uh, D as well. Okay, so 
all of these are uh, subspaces of the uh, the space of the two by two um, uh, matrices. Okay, uh, so let's move and uh, change a little bit uh, subject now and, and uh, restrain ourselves to the column space uh, of the matrix. So we have seen this uh, as early as I believe lecture uh, uh, three or four. So let's repeat what uh, is all about. Uh, so remember, uh, the column space became important because we wanted to see when do we have a solution of AX equal to B for a given A uh, and a given B. And we saw that uh, AX is nothing else but a combination of the columns. And that combination of the columns defines the column space uh, of A. And the column space of A is denoted with uh, uh, C of A. And it's nothing else but a linear combination of the columns of A. So uh, I remind you, if I have a matrix that is M by N uh, of real numbers, the, the column space of A is a subspace of R to the M. Okay, you can show that all the properties of um, uh, subspaces are being satisfied by the, uh, the column space. Uh, but remember, the column space of an M by N matrix is a subspace of uh, R to the M. Okay. Um, so, uh, and I believe this slide basically just says that. And um, uh, I remind you that, uh, uh, again, uh, because AX is a combination of the columns, uh, the statement here that AX is equal to B is solvable only if uh, B is in the column space uh, of A. Okay. So, um, and um, all right. So, uh, let me just proceed now. Uh, and uh, take one example. Uh, let's consider a matrix uh, three by two, and um, uh, the we want to basically write AX as a combination of the two columns. This is what I have done here, all right? And uh, immediately you can see that uh, this column space, the combination basically of those two vectors, define a plane uh, that is uh, passing through the origin, and it is a plane in in the three-dimensional space, okay? So if uh, this is one of the vectors, one of the columns, this is another, any vector that is a linear combination of those two column vectors will be in uh, that uh, plane. And if you're interested to solve AX equal to B, you can only solve it if the vector B itself is on, uh, on that plane, okay? So uh, appreciate again here the fact that the column space of A is uh, uh, a subspace of R cube. Okay, you notice the columns have three components, so this is uh, a subspace uh, of uh, uh, R cube. And um, uh, again, uh, you know, without going back to an earlier lecture, if somehow you want to solve AX equal to B and I give you vector B that it's outside. Uh, the column space outside of this plane, you would not be able to solve it uh, using uh, any of the techniques that we have discussed until now. Certainly, the ideas of elimination will not work in giving a solution uh, to this uh, system uh, of equations. Okay. Um, uh, uh, obviously, the column space, uh, this plane that uh, in the previous example uh, passes uh, through the um, uh, the origin, and you can see this immediately because if uh, AX, you remember, is um, uh, a combination of the columns, and obviously if you take um, uh, uh, zero combination of each column, right, if you take X to be the zero vector, this combination of the columns basically would be the zero vector, okay? So the zero vector is, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is certainly a solution to this system of equations AX equal to zero. And for now, uh, uh, one of those solutions is nothing else but X equal uh, to zero uh, uh, it itself. Okay, uh, let's uh, move away from uh, this uh, simple example and um, consider uh, again this um, uh, uh, four by three matrix that you see there. Uh, notice uh, let me see if we can see some structure in this matrix. Uh, notice that um, if you take the third uh, column, 
is basically the summation of the two columns. Uh, basically, what we're saying here is uh, the uh, the third column depends on the first two columns. Uh, okay, uh, but you know, if we look at this, uh, the column space of A is a subspace of R four. Okay, so if you try to solve A x equal to B, uh, uh, we can only get solutions if B. Uh, belongs to the column space uh, of A. And I'm going to give you um, two solutions of AX equal B uh, for two different vector Bs, so you can see exactly uh, what possible combinations uh, of X you will need for different Bs. So let me just put these things up. If B is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, immediately you can see the solution is 1, 0, 0. Basically, you only take... Uh, the first column, and that gives you uh, uh, a vector x that is 1, 0, 0. And a, x, a times 1, 0, 0 gives you the first column. Uh, so there is a solution to this system of equations. So uh, not surprising, because what is 1, 2, 3, 4? It is a column itself. So obviously a column belongs to the column space of this matrix. And similarly, this is also the second column. So... Uh, this belongs to the column space. Obviously, there is a solution to AX equal B. And what is the solution is 0, 1, 0. Just take the second column and you get back uh, the second column of the, of, the matrix, um, of the matrix A. So the fact that these uh, two columns are the only independent columns in uh, this matrix uh, uh, A uh, uh, results to the fact that the column space is a two-dimensional subspace of R4, okay? So uh, the dimensionality, as we will see later on, is uh, 2. It implies basically that uh, out of the three columns, we only have two uh, independent uh, columns, and uh, the uh, column space is a two-dimensional subspace uh, of R4. Okay. Uh, now, let's forget the column space and do the following thing. Uh, the column space obviously has a number of vectors, right? And uh, the column space, we said, is a linear combination uh, of the columns of, uh, of a matrix uh, A. So let me uh, generalize this a little bit and start with uh, any set of vectors that I indicate here as uh, S. Uh, so this, let's say, can be vectors in R cube or in Rn or anything. So this is a set of vectors, and then I form a subspace of my original space V by taking linear combinations of these vectors, and I call this space uh, SS here. Uh, so effectively what I do is by, we already know, by taking these linear combinations of vectors, uh, so we start with a set of vectors and we take linear combinations of them, we form a subspace of the original space V, okay? Again, start with some vectors, take linear combinations that defines a subspace of the original space uh, V. And I write here this uh, subspace as S, as all the vectors that are linear combinations of the original vectors uh, in the set S uh, that I indicate here V1 to Vn. So in uh, that case, we uh, refer to this, we say that this subspace is spanned by the set of vectors S, okay? Uh, uh, this is a very important terminology, right? You start with a set of vectors, and then you generate a subspace that is all possible linear combinations. So this subspace is spanned by the vectors uh, that we started with. Uh, in uh, another language, we say that this subspace is the span of the set of vectors uh, V equivalent, okay? Now, I did not imply here that the set of vectors are what we call independent or have any other properties, can be anything. We just form linear combinations. These linear combinations define a subspace, and this subspace is spanned by S, or uh, they are the span of the set of vectors uh, uh, that we started with. Okay, so let me uh, do... Uh, if, a few examples. So we start with um, 
uh, okay, so we said that uh, all combinations of these vectors form a subspace. Um, when you only take um, uh, uh, the, I mean, if S was the columns of a matrix, right, then obviously what we discuss here uh, is nothing else but the column uh, space, which is a subspace of Rm. So effectively, you can uh, say, uh, using this terminology, that the column space uh, uh, spans the columns of the matrix uh, of the matrix A. Okay, um, uh, and again, uh, we have seen from a previous example uh, the original set of vectors that we started with don't have to be uh, independent or anything like that, but still we can generate a subspace that is spanned by uh, the columns of a matrix um, uh, of a matrix A. So uh, if you have a set of vectors S and, and you take linear combinations of these uh, vectors, the subspace SS is the smallest possible subspace that contains S. Okay? So you can think if you take linear combinations of the columns of a matrix that uh, uh, define a plane uh, the way we did in an earlier example, right? So this is... Uh, uh, this linear combination of this vector defines uh, a plane, and it is the smallest subspace that contains the, the columns of the metric. Okay. Um, so let me um, uh, give some examples of this uh, column space of the matrix A. <coughs> so we're going to take uh, the identity matrix, uh, and we're going to take two matrices A and B. that are defined, uh, as you see on the top of the slide. So uh, if you take the, if we look at, uh, if we stay in the R2 space, and you take the column space uh, of the identity matrix, then this space is the whole of R2. Okay? Basically, these two columns are independent, and they span the whole of R2. So you can take any vector, if you take any combination uh, of the columns of the matrix I that you see here, uh, here you can actually form any vector in R2, okay? So this, the, the subspace that you get is the whole of R2. Now, uh, with matrix A, it's a little bit different because you notice column 2 is 2 times column 1, so really uh, this is a one-dimensional uh, subspace, uh, and uh, it's nothing else but a line in, in uh, R2, okay? And this line basically um, uh, has the direction uh, 1, 2. So any vector, if you multiply this with any constant C, any vector of this form C to C uh, belongs uh, to the column space of uh, this matrix uh, A, which also means that if you try to solve AX equal to B, uh, you can only uh, have Bs that belong in that line. Otherwise, you will not be able to solve this uh, system uh, of equations. Now, uh, the third example, uh, if you look now at uh, this example, uh, uh, if you look at the matrix uh, B, uh, uh, obviously the column space, again, is, is um, uh, a subspace uh, of uh, R2. And uh, if you look carefully, it has two independent columns. So, for example, uh, column one, right, and uh, column three are independent. And uh, in R2, uh, these two columns basically can generate any vector, okay? So, uh, uh, basically, the, uh, the column space of B is the whole of, uh, of R2. And if you try to solve uh, Bx equal to some vector little b, you can solve it for any vector B uh, in R2 uh, because uh, the column space of B uh, spans basically the whole uh, the whole space uh, R2. And uh, this is more or less the statement uh, that you see here. Uh, what uh, it says that uh, uh, any B is uh, is allowed and in principle you know what the column space of uh, b is nothing else actually it's identical to the column space of i okay um, 
uh, the the two vectors look the same, but uh, uh, in principle, you remember the basis is not unique, right? Two vectors uh, uniquely define um, two independent vectors uniquely define R two, and uh, effectively in both the I matrix and the B matrix, uh, that is uh, the uh, the, ca the case. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, obviously, in in uh, the uh, case um, uh, of the matrix B, uh, the column contains um, uh, uh, the column contains two components. Okay, uh, but actually, so maybe I did not say this correctly. Uh, so when you try to solve um, uh, uh, B uh, X equal to uh, little b, right? Uh, so the little b will be uh, a vector in uh, two dimensions. So any vector, I'm sorry, let me go back. Any vector little b, you'll be able to generate it by a combination of the first and the third column. But you notice the difference of using this matrix b and the matrix uh, i is this matrix i is 2 by 2, this is 2 by 3. So if I have a system of equations here, b times x equal to little b, x has um, uh, three components, all right? So in, uh, in uh, this system of linear system of equations with this matrix b, you will have more than one solution, okay? But in the context, again, of the, of the column spaces, uh, the column space of b and the column space of uh, uh, the identity matrix in, uh, um, uh, you know, in uh, R2, they are exactly the same. So let me just sum summarize. Uh, uh, Rn contains all the column vectors. They have uh, n uh, components. We saw examples of matrices. We mentioned you can have um, the space of functions, uh, the space of polynomials. Uh, you can have just a zero vector. All of them are vector spaces. Uh, you need to be uh, always checking that uh, if you take two uh, vectors in that space, that linear combinations also belong to that space. Once that is satisfied, you're happy that uh, the properties are taken care of uh, and uh, your, uh, uh, your space is a vector space, okay? Uh, the combination of the columns define a subspace of Rm, and we call this the column space. So this is one of the four fundamental spaces that uh, uh, we will work uh, with uh, in uh, the next several lectures. Uh, the uh, system of equations AX equal to B has a solution when B is in the column space of A. Okay, we saw this uh, already multiple times. And um, again, I remind you that uh, when you look at linear systems of equations, the left-hand side, AX, is a linear combination of the columns, and uh, that's why B has to be in the column space for AX equal to B to have uh, a solution. Okay, so we're moving now to uh, another fundamental space that uh, we discussed on uh, uh, the previous lecture. That's the null space, so what I need to do is I need to do some uh, revisiting. And then, uh, more importantly, I want by the end of the lecture today to tell you exactly how to compute uh, the solution to the system of equations say x equal to zero. So, how do you find the solutions uh, to the homogeneous equation a x equal to zero? Or, if you want, in a different language, how do you find uh, the basis vectors uh, of the null space? All right, this would be a more important uh, way to look at this uh, this problem. What vectors basically uh, satisfy AX equal to zero? Uh, so we know that the subspace, uh, that the null space, uh, the vector X such that AX equal to zero for a matrix A that is M by N, it is a subspace of Rn. Okay, remember, column space was a subspace of Rm, here is a subspace of Rn. Uh, so let me uh, give some statements uh, of uh, things that we will see in the next few slides and uh, so that you remember what uh, 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 is following. The definition is basically of the null space is the vector x 
that uh, give you AEX equal to zero. Uh, obviously, uh, the zero solution is included, so we know uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, a subspace. is very uh, uh, simple to uh, prove it. Uh, now, what we will see is that when you apply raw operations and you do uh, elimination from um, uh, a matrix A to uh, an upper uh, uh, echelon-like, you know, or uh, upper triangular or the art matrix that we will see, uh, that is a staircase type of a matrix. Uh, so when you do these raw operations, raw operations don't change the null space. So all of the matrices we will get by doing raw operations have exactly the same identical null space. So the objective will be to do raw operations to simplify the algebra and compute uh, the solutions to the null space problem, uh, let's say, using this matrix R that we will see later in the lectures, uh, in a way that would be much easier than starting directly with uh, and working with the matrix uh, A. So uh, this matrix R is what uh, we will refer to as the reduced row echelon uh, form. Uh, and uh, this uh, matrix R, uh, we have all the pivots equal to one, and above the pivots we have uh, uh, zeros, and below the pivots we'll also have uh, zeros. Uh, and if one column has no uh, pivot, then that uh, column identifies a special solution to the null space problem with uh, the variable j corresponding to that com column being equal to one. Okay? So any column after we do operations, has no pivots on it, uh, then immediately that tells you uh, uh, a possible, uh, uh, it tells you a special solution, basically identifies a special solution to the null space problem, and that special solution, uh, we will uh, compute it by uh, taking uh, the variable corresponding to that column uh, equal to one. Interestingly, and uh, not surprising, the number of uh, pivots will be uh, the number of uh, non-zero rows, uh, and uh, and uh, this will uh, we will identify with the rank of the matrix, and uh, so we will see that uh, we will have uh, R columns with pivots, and the remaining uh, n minus R will be free columns, and this will be the free variables uh, that effectively will define the solutions, the special solutions to the null space. You can actually think that uh, uh, n minus r uh, will be uh, what we will call the dimensionality of the null space, right? So if uh, uh, in the null space, each of these uh, free variables can take a value one and the rest zero, so effectively it will give us n minus r, uh, r independent vectors, and that's the basis uh, of, uh, uh, of the null space. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, you know, if you have a matrix that um, uh, has um, uh, less rows than uh, columns, uh, so you know that uh, this uh, null space problem, AX equal to zero, has non-zero solutions. Because uh, if you think uh, the number of independent rows of this matrix is uh, at most M, and the number of independent rows is the same as the number of independent columns, or the number of columns with pivots. So obviously they are going to be, uh, because m is less than n, they are going to have n minus r free columns, and those free columns will give you non-zero solutions to the uh, null space problem. Uh, again, uh, you have seen on this slide way too much information, and uh, hopefully in the next uh, few slides with uh, some examples, a lot of these things uh, will come together uh, and make sense, and then you can revisit this slide to be sure that you understand uh, the summary that you see uh, you see here. All right, so we're looking at the solutions of AX uh, equal to X. Uh, the obvious solution is X equal to zero, so obviously we're looking for something that is not zero. And, uh, 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 and uh, you know, the null space contains vectors uh, X that are in Rn, so it is, uh, uh, as we will see on the next slide, obviously it is um, uh, a subspace of Rn. 
and to prove that the subspace of Rn, what you need to do is you need to take linear combinations of two vectors x and y that they are in, in the null space. So um, uh, I put all of this up if you take x and y so that ax equal to 0 and a, a y equal to 0. Obviously, the linear, uh, if you add them, a of x plus y is also 0. And if you multiply x with some constant, a times cx is also giving you 0, right? So uh, uh, this is a null space. Uh, uh, the null space, I'm sorry, is a subspace of uh, uh, Rn, uh, and uh, it's one of the uh, four fundamental subspaces uh, that we will see uh, defined out of the matrix A. We already have seen the column matrix, so the null space is the second uh, extremely important uh, uh, subspace uh, uh, defined for matrix A. All right, so let me uh, start with one example. Uh, so we have a system of equations 4 by 3. Um, uh, this is the null space problem, so we're looking for vector axes, uh, x1, x2, x3, so that a times x equal to 0. And immediately observe that the third column of the matrix, all right, so if I look at the third column, is the sum of the first two columns. So uh, immediately you see that the obvious solution to the null space problem is 1, 1, minus 1, all right? So effectively, if you start thinking about this, this null space solution identifies, uh, you know, the dependent columns. In this case, it tells you column three uh, depends on columns one and two. And it tells you that column three is really uh, the sum of columns one and two. And, and the idea is, okay, it's easy to identify this visually in this example. We would like a little bit of an automated manner in uh, doing this um, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 you know, being able to, to, to get a solution uh, like uh, the simple case uh, that we see here, being able to generalize this for more complicated uh, uh, matrices. All right, so the null space, again, in this case, is a line in uh, uh, R cube, all right? And uh, so let's uh, look um, a few more examples. So let's take... Um, uh, the matrix A, that is uh, 1, 3, uh, 2, and 6. So you notice again that this matrix is uh, singular because the second column is uh, uh, two times the first column. And um, uh, you can also see the second row is three times the first row. So it's a singular matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to do first uh, elimination to the systems of uh, Ax equal to 0. And I remind you what's elimination. We're going to define the uh, uh, the multiplier here, uh, uh, the multiplier which is three, and and uh, uh, subtract uh, three times row one from row two. So three x one will cancel out. Uh, six x two and six x two will cancel out, and we get zero equal to zero. So uh, really, what uh, the null space is? It is uh, defined by the equation uh, x one plus uh, 2x2 equal to 0. That's a line, and that line defines my null space in uh, this particular uh, this particular problem. So uh, before I refer to, you know, that uh, we're going to identify what I call special solutions to the homogeneous problem Ax equal to 0, so you may wonder, what is the special solution to, uh, uh, to this particular problem? And the special solution is basically uh, minus 2 uh, and 1, okay? And again, you know what it says? It says column 2 is 2 times uh, column 1. So when I multiply A with the special solution, I get, of course, the, uh, the zero vector, okay? And uh, notice that in the special solution, uh, so when we did elimination effectively, there is only one pivot element, right, and one pivot column, which is the first column. And so uh, the second variable is a free variable. And the free variable that you notice here, I put, I, I identified uh, as uh, one, okay? We said the free variable is, uh, uh, as one. So uh, if you uh, put uh, x2 equal to one, you can see immediately that uh, x1 is, uh, if you multiply x 
a by x1, x2, you get x1 plus 2x2. So for x2 uh, equal to um, uh, 1, you have 2. So uh, if you set uh, x1 plus 2x2 equal to 0, you get basically that x1 is equal to minus 2. Okay? And uh, the key idea here is this minus 2 identifies for you that uh, the uh, second column is two times uh, the first column. So when you take uh, this linear combination of the columns, obviously you will get zero, right? If you take minus two times the column one plus column two, you will get zero uh, because of these uh, dependencies between the columns that we manage uh, to identify in this particular problem. Okay, um, so the null space consists of all uh, the vectors basically that are parallel to this vector minus two to one. So you can multiply this by any constant and that belongs to the, uh, the null space. Okay, so let me do uh, another little example. So let me take uh, a vector that is three by one. So this looks like a weird vector. Um, I'm sorry, this is a matrix, right? So we're looking at the matrix A uh, that it's a three by one matrix, and we want to identify the null space of that. So, we, you know, we do the homogeneous problem AX equal to zero, and uh, immediately you can see if you multiply this uh, A with a vector X1, X2, X3, what you get is you get a plane. Uh, so, uh, obviously, if you're looking for the vectors uh, AX equal to zero, uh, you will have to work with uh, this particular uh, plane. And uh, uh, the question is, you know, if you do elimination of this matrix, you can immediately see that you have only one pivot, okay? You have um, uh, uh, one, uh, one uh, pivot, uh, and uh, which implies that the variables basically, if we call the variables X, Y, and Z, the variables Y and Z are free variables, okay? So... Um, uh, effectively, what we can do is to define, so we said the null space is a plane, all right? So to define uh, these uh, 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 the special vectors in that plane, what we can do is we can uh, set each of the variables separately equal to one and the other free variable equal to zero. And then uh, from the equation of the plane, compute what X is. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set Y equal to one, I'm gonna set z equal to zero, and this equation immediately gives me x equal uh, minus two y, so that's how I get minus two. And then I get uh, another special solution by setting z equal to one, y equal to zero, and then you can see immediately that x is equal to minus three. So effectively the plane that um, defines the null space uh, for this uh, matrix uh, A, is the plane that uh, contains these vectors S1 and S2 in, um, in uh, R cube, okay? And um, um, uh, effectively, uh, any combination of these uh, vectors uh, is uh, a solution to the null space problem, but uh, effectively, these two vectors uh, are uh, uh, the ones that uh, are needed to generate uh, the whole of the null space, okay? Uh, notice effectively that I have um, uh, two free variables because there is uh, only one pivot element uh, here and we will see this in more examples as they come uh, uh, next. So effectively, in the language of uh, what you may be familiar, the dimensionality of this subspace is, is two, which is, you know, something uh, we already have affiliated if you have uh, a plane embedded in three dimensions, right? That the dimensionality of that plane is two. Uh, so these vectors uh, capture basically what we will later call the basis of that uh, uh, null space. Of course, I haven't defined anything about basis yet. So these are the spatial solutions. And the idea here is based on what we have done up to now, any combination of these two special vectors gives me any vector in the null space. And, and uh, that's the only thing uh, you need to know um, uh, as of now. Okay, so uh, 
um, in uh, in computing the uh, the null space, we're going to do the following thing: we're going to reduce uh, our metric A to what is called this rho echelon uh, form R, and then uh, once we do that, this will help us to identify the solutions of A x equal to uh, zero. Uh, effectively, we will be able to identify uh, which columns are independent, and those will be the columns with pivots, and the rest will be uh, free columns and uh, corresponding to free variables. And uh, for each of them, I will be able to define a special solution of the null space problem, uh, where one free variable is one and all the rest is zero. And then I will use AEX equals Z to calculate uh, the pivot variables. Okay. So again, identify the free variables, take each of them to be equal to one with all the other free variables equal to zero. And then by using AEX equal to zero and having the three variables at fixed values, go and compute the pivot variables, and that will give you the complete vector X that satisfies AEX equal uh, to zero. All right, so let me uh, start doing some um, uh, trivial examples on uh, this uh, type of problems. So I'm going to take uh, three matrices, um, this two by two matrix, one, two, three, eight. Uh, matrix B that I use it. Uh, by um, inserting here a and 2a. Uh, so basically, you have a replica of uh, 2a on the bottom to define b. And then uh, I have a replica of 2a uh, next to a. So in this case, my matrix is 4 by 2. In this matrix is uh, 2 by 4. Uh, and uh, so we will try to identify what the null space of these uh, uh, problems of these matrices are. Uh, and obviously, you know, the zero uh, solution is always a solution to the null space problem. So you are looking for uh, non-zero vectors uh, x. Okay, so let me uh, start with uh, the matrix A. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do elimination, get rid of this three. So we're going to subtract three times row one, and we're going to do the same thing to, uh, you know, obviously the right-hand side, because there are zero, nothing changes here, okay? So this three will disappear. And when I subtract three times two from eight, I get uh, two. So immediately you can see from here that the null space of uh, the matrix A has x2 and x1 equal to zero. So basically the null space of A is my uh, Z null space. You remember uh, Z is the space that only contains uh, the, uh, the zero vector. Okay, so in this case, obviously, because the null space is uh, contains the zero vector only. There are no special solutions. Uh, both columns uh, are independent. They are pivot columns. Both rows are uh, independent. And uh, the matrix A is invertible. And I can solve AEX equal to B for any uh, uh, right-hand side vector uh, B. All right, so let me do the same thing now with uh, uh, the matrix B, OK? So I want to solve BX equal to 0. Notice that x, again, is two-dimensional, right? So I want to find the components x1 and x2 so that bx equal to 0. Notice, you know, uh, because this second part of the matrix is basically additional constraints on the vector x, but these additional constraints on the vector x are basically copies of the constraints defined by a, so the null space doesn't change. So this adding this to a um, uh, column-wise, the way you see here, doesn't really do anything to the null space. So the null space of B, it is really just the vector x equal to 0. And so the null space of B is this uh, 0, uh, is the subspace with only the 0 uh, element. Um, now, in um, uh, uh, if we look now at the matrix C, uh, here's things are a little bit more interesting. So here you notice uh, the uh, when I uh, compute the null space, the vector x has four components, right? Because this is a matrix that is uh, two by four. So I have four components. And uh, so uh, obviously I expect to get some free variables here. So let's see how this uh, maybe happen. So if we uh, do uh, elimination on the matrix uh, C, uh, you have to trust me that, you know, if you, uh, so we have to get rid basically of the three to start with. So we're going to subtract three times 
row one from row two, and uh, this will get rid of the three. So this will become six or eight minus six gives you two, and we get something like that. Okay. So what you can see immediately that you have uh, two pivot columns. All right. So this is a pivot column. Uh, this is a pivot uh, column. Uh, this is a pivot uh, 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 element here. Okay. So effectively, in uh, this problem, the uh, columns three uh, and four uh, are actually dependent on the columns one and two. I mean, you can uh, immediately see, right, that this uh, third column is two times the first column. And you can immediately see that the fourth column is two times uh, the second column. So these are uh, what I call the free columns, and they define the free variables. So X3 and X4 are the free variables. And how do we get the solutions to the null space problem? I remind you, and I will show you in the, in the next slide, uh, hopefully, take each of the free variables. So take X3 and X4, separately set one of them to one, the other one to zero, and then compute uh, what the pivot variables are. So compute, solve basically AX equal to zero uh, with given variables X3 and X4. So this will only require actually to use the, uh, the matrix one, two, zero, and two, which is two independent columns. So you can actually solve the system of equations for the pivot variables. Uh, and uh, and then what you get will be the uh, special solutions for the null space problem. And so let's see how they look like. So, uh, by the way, uh, my original sub uh, null space problem was C times a vector S equal to zero. Remember, when you do raw operations, nothing changes in the context of null space. So my problem uh, is the same as computing the null space of U. That's what I have here. So we said column three and column four are basically dependent on columns one and two. So the variables X3 and X4 are uh, free variables. So in the uh, first special solution, what I do is I, th I set X3 equal to one that you see here. Okay, so you see uh, X3 equal to one, right? This is X3 equal to one and x4 equal to 0. And then I go and solve ax, as1 equal to 0, and identify what x1 and x2 will be, and it comes out to be minus 2 and 0. And uh, if you look extremely carefully, this solution, actually, what it tells you is, remember, this is column 3. It tells you that column 3, it's actually 2 times column 1. So when you take minus two column one plus column three, you get zero. So effectively, we have identified with a special solution what combinations of the columns uh, give us uh, a zero solution. So we do the same thing with uh, the uh, X4. So we set X4 equal to zero, I'm sorry, to one. Uh, we uh, set X3 equal to zero in this problem, and we go and compute uh, the X1 and X2. And again, not surprising, this minus 2 is not strange at all because column 4 is nothing else but 2 times column 2. So if you try to take linear combinations that will give you 0, it will be minus 2 uh, column uh, 2 plus 1 column 4 equal to 0. So again, what we have is we have these uh, two special vectors in uh, R4 and uh, uh, a combination of these uh, two vectors uh, basically will give us uh, the null space of our original uh, matrix uh, C that uh, we started with. Uh, I am going to show you with uh, a further reduction later on on the matrix U, how you can immediately identify these vectors without actually having to do much algebra. Not that we had to do anything in this case, all right? but we will see how these vectors come naturally uh, as part of the uh, elimination process. Okay, um, so um, so here is you know uh, what we're gonna do. Uh, so we produce this matrix uh, uh, A. Uh, from A we produce this matrix U, right? And we use U up to now 
to identify the special solutions. So what we're going to do now is take you and transform it to something that is an even simpler metrics that we will call it R. So this metrics R, we are going to do it as follows. We're going to put zeros above the pivots, okay? So once we have identified the pivots, we're going to try to get rid with row operations again of the elements above the pivots. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to put uh, one uh, in the pivots, okay? So again, we're going to put one in the pivots and with row operations, we're going to try to uh, eliminate all the elements above the, uh, the pivots. Uh, why doing uh, all of this? Because you will see that this metrics R will help us to get directly the solution to the null space problem. But for now, what I want you to remember is if I continue doing, uh, we went from A to U with row operations. If I do further row operations to go from U to the special metrics R, the null spaces don't change, right? Row operations doesn't change the null space of A. So the null space of A is the same as the null space of U, the same as the null space uh, of R. Um, and uh, we will see because we said we're going to put on the pivot elements one and zero above, the pivot columns of R will actually bring out directly the identity matrix uh, I. And uh, this uh, simplification will allow us to compute the pivot variables uh, directly without uh, literally any further algebra because the algebra has already been taken care of in part of the uh, elimination process. All right, so uh, who is, uh, what is the R matrix um, uh, for this U matrix that we had before? So you remember what we need to do is, so this element two here is on the second row, the second element is a pivot uh, element. So we need to get rid of the two above. So how do you get rid of this? You will subtract uh, column, I mean, row two from row one, okay? So the first pivot element will not change because there is zero below it. This becomes two minus two, zero. This is two. And four minus four, it will give you zero. And then uh, I am going to divide the second row by two to get one here, right? That's what we said here. So this will become one. This becomes zero and this becomes two. So notice immediately I put here in bold face uh, the identity Two by two matrix has come up explicitly in this uh, row echelon, uh, uh, this reduced row echelon uh, for uh, R. Okay, um, so we did all these multiplications, okay, and um, um, uh, effectively, look how simple things look now, right? Uh, you can see the third column immediately tells me that is two times. Uh, the first pivot column and the fourth column is nothing else but two times the uh, second pivot column. So basically, these twos that you see here are the, uh, they tell me uh, what combinations of the uh, pivot columns uh, define the, the free columns. And guess what? These combinations are exactly what we get in the spatial vectors S1 and S2 that we have seen before. The only difference is these twos that you see here, we had to reverse signs, right? Because we're looking for the vector says so that the linear combination of columns gives me zero. So obviously minus two of column one plus column three has to give me zero, right? That's vector S1. And of course the vector S2 is minus two column uh, two plus column four has to be equal to zero. So again, these coefficients that you see here uh, are exactly what is needed to define what combinations of the pivot columns define uh, the, uh, the free columns of this uh, uh, row reduce echelon uh, matrix uh, uh, R. Okay, um, so, uh, so effectively, uh, we, uh, through this uh, process, uh, we have been able to identify uh, what columns are independent. Uh, we have been able to identify if there are non-zero solutions uh, to the uh, null space uh, uh, problem. And um, 
you know, we have um, uh, separated the columns to pivot columns and uh, free columns. Uh, if we only have uh, uh, pivot columns, all right, then uh, the solution to the null space is only the zero vector, okay? There is no free variables. Uh, if uh, we have identified free variables, uh, then uh, the, the we have non-zero uh, solutions to the null space problem. And in the previous example, we did see uh, 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 the case with uh, uh, the two by four matrix uh, that we work with. Okay, so let's do another example. So this example has uh, uh, a four by seven matrix, all right? And I give you directly the reduced row echelon uh, form. So there is two uh, uh, pivot columns, okay? There's two pivot columns. I'm sorry, wrong, wrong, wrong. There are three pivot columns. I missed this one here. There are three pivot columns. And um, uh, notice there are three uh, independent rows, the rows one, two, three. And the fourth row, it's actually, uh, obviously, it, it resulted from elimination, uh, indicating it's all zeros, indicating basically that the last row of the original matrix A uh, was uh, nothing else but a linear combination of the matrices that um, of the rows uh, one, two, and three. So this um, in in this problem to find the solutions to the null space problem, we have seven variables, right? It's four by seven, and uh, the variable x1, x2, and x6 are the pivot variables. Uh, x3, x4, x5, x7 are the free variables, right? So there are four special solutions to uh, the null uh, space problem. And um, uh, so if you can bring a matrix to this form immediately by looking uh, on uh, what pivot columns you have and, and uh, what... Um, uh, uh, free columns you have, you can identify what the dimensionality of the null space uh, problem is, and also you can identify the special solutions that form uh, what we will call later on the basis uh, of the of the null space. Now, th the fact that uh, this matrix has uh, uh, every element on the fourth row equal to zero implies that if you try to solve AX equal to B, uh, the this problem will have uh, solutions only if the fourth component of the vector B is equal to zero, right? So otherwise, uh, so the B has to belong to the null space, and the null space, you notice, uh, is formed by columns one, two, and uh, and uh, uh, sixth, and uh, and uh, those uh, all of them have the fourth component uh, equal to zero. Okay, so uh, so let's uh, uh, work another example. So this is a, a very particular matrix. Um, uh, it is uh, uh, three by uh, four. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this matrix to uh, uh, we do elimination, bring it first to the U form, and then uh, get rid things above the pivots and and. Uh, Put one uh, in uh, the pivots, and uh, let's see what uh, is uh, is uh, coming out. Okay, so the first elimination step is to get rid of two. Okay, so if you subtract uh, two times row one from row two, you will get this. If you subtract uh, 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 three times, well, actually, if you do this uh, and then you try to eliminate uh, uh, three as well, so. If you subtract three times row one from row three, uh, so this, uh, uh, you know, three minus three will give you zero. This is six minus six. Obviously, uh, you will get zero, zero, two, and four. And you can see here, uh, uh, you can identify first that uh, the third row is uh, the identical, basically, with uh, the... Uh, second uh, row, which means actually if you continue doing elimination and get rid of the th of the two on the third row, you will basically have the third row to disappear. But immediately, like this, you can identify here, uh, if, we, if you make this disappear, you can identify that uh, uh, the third column 
is going to be uh, a pivot column together with uh, column uh, one. So let's uh, put this in the U form. Okay, so in the U form, uh, we get rid of, uh, we eliminate uh, two here. So it will give us all zeros. And uh, this is our U matrix. And immediately you can see uh, columns one and, and, uh, and uh, 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 obviously uh, here columns one and, and uh, three are the pivot columns. So there's a type here, okay? So columns one and three are the pivot columns. And uh, uh, columns two and four uh, define the free columns, okay? Uh, and, and the free variables. So uh, before we go to the art matrix that is going to immediately tell us what the solution to the null space uh, problem is, let's try to work uh, with uh, uh, this matrix uh, U and see if we can actually, uh, using elementary sort of uh, uh, calculations, if we can identify uh, the special solutions, okay? So uh, the U is in the uh, uh, echelon form. Um, uh, so the... Uh, uh, the third uh, row, we uh, are not uh, interested, it's all zeros. It, it was eliminated because of uh, it was a, uh, a linear combination of the, uh, it was actually the, you know, uh, identical to the second row uh, when we derived the metrics uh, uh, that we had on the previous slide. And um, uh, so uh, this metric, these uh, columns that you see inside the squares here are the, uh, uh, the pivot columns, okay? So what we need to do is uh, we have two free variables, x2 and x4. So we're going to set each of them separately to 1, the other to 0, and then we're going to compute uh, what the um, the pivot uh, variables are by solving basically ex equal to 0. And effectively, uh, in doing so, we're going to identify what uh, combinations of columns 1 and 3 give us uh, columns uh, two and four, and I'm going to directly give you what the answer is. So um, uh, if we uh, look uh, in um, uh, uh, on the bottom of the slide here, you can see that um, if you put the variable x2 equal to zero and the other free variable x4 equal to zero, okay, uh, and you solve ax equal to zero, effectively, you will get for x1 to be minus 2. Uh, oh, oops, let me go back. So you will get for x1 to be minus 2. And for uh, uh, x3, the other pivot variable is equal to 0. And this makes sense because if you look, column 2, right, is really 2 times column 1. So obviously, minus 2 of column 1 plus column 2 is going to give you 0. And... Um, uh, I give you here the algebra on uh, how to solve AX equal to zero once you have uh, identified the free variables. But the key ingredient here is uh, take the free variables, take X2, set it equal to one, take X4, set it equal to zero. That will identify for you S1. And on the next slide, uh, if you do the same thing, you take uh, X4 equal to one and, you, and put X2 equal to zero, you will identify the other uh, special vector uh, from the null space that uh, effectively, let's see what it says. To get column four um, is uh, 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 two times uh, column three, all right? I can see here. And it says, um, and, and, uh, and minus two, all right? And minus two times column one, is that correct? So if you take minus two of that, and two times that gives you four, and four gives you two. Nice. And if you take uh, two times that, uh, it gives you uh, four. And remember the signs here are reversed from what we see in the combination of the columns because uh, u times s2 has to be giving you equal to zero, right? So you're asking what combinations of the columns uh, gives you zero. And looking at the metrics, you say, oh, you know what? This matrix is... Uh, minus two times the first columns and two times uh, this column. So uh, you need to reverse signs to get the solution to the null space problem. So once you do this, basically the null space is defined 
by a combination of the two spatial vectors, and it is uh, all vectors x that have this form that you see uh, in, um, uh, in this equation here. Now, there is a way to uh, uh, explicitly see some of the solutions and these two vectors that you see here by forming this uh, reduced row echelon matrix R, uh, as I discussed before. And to do this, you have to do two steps from uh, modifying U. First, get rid of these two above the pivot element two. How are you going to do this? Subtract basically row two from um, uh, row two from row one. So if you do this, this two minus two will give you zero, all right? And this minus four will give you minus two. And then divide row two by two. This will give you one and two. Okay, so you can see now the identity metrics when it comes to the uh, pivot variables, and then you can see the elements two minus two and two uh, when it comes uh, to the to the free variables. And notice when you look at um, uh, we're looking now at uh, the uh, free variable uh, uh, x two. All right. So here uh, on the first spatial vector uh, we have. Um, uh, x2 equal to 1. And uh, so, uh, uh, again, uh, x2 equal to 1. So this is, we're looking at the second, basically, variable that corresponds to the second column. Notice here I have minus 2. What is that minus 2? Is actually uh, minus that number that you see up there. Okay? So the matrix that you get inside R that corresponds to the free variables immediately identifies, for, when you look at the second column, it identifies the combinations of the uh, pivot columns that are uh, giving you column two, and that combination is minus two. So uh, we reverse the sign, and uh, this is minus two. And similarly for here, for the variable x4, if we reverse the signs, we will get uh, a two, uh, and uh, and a minus two, and and uh, this is exactly uh, what uh, uh, what I have here. Okay, so um, um, uh, again, um, uh, I am uh, able here to from uh, looking at uh, the matrix two by two that corresponds to the free variables. That matrix ad identifies what combinations of the pivot columns actually gives me uh, the, uh, uh, the the free columns, okay? And, and the only thing I have to do is reverse the signs that you see here uh, from 2 to minus 2, and here from minus 2 to 2 to 2 and minus 2 that you say, that you see, uh, you see, you see here. I'm going to show to you mathematically, actually, in, uh, in one second, and why the sign reversal comes so that you can uh, see that there is no magic here uh, at all. So let me uh, do the following uh, thing that, uh, uh, so remember this uh, column corresponds to first variable, this corresponds to the second variable, this is to the third and the fourth variable. So how about if I take the first and the third variable and I put them in sequence, right? So, so the sequence is now x1, x3 are my first two variables, and then I put the two free variables, x2 and x4, uh, next. Would you agree with me that this matrix R, R basically will first have the identity matrix? You remember the identity 1, 0, 0, 1. It will come first because I put the pivot variables first. And then I have this matrix F that is 2, 0, minus 2, 2. Okay. Uh, 2, 0, minus 2, 2. All right. This is, I call it F because... Uh, it says something about the free variables, right? And then, of course, I had um, on the bottom, I had zeros corresponding uh, to things uh, that came during the elimination process, rows, basically, that they were combinations uh, of previous rows. So if I want to write this very general, uh, the R matrix uh, can written, uh, be written as like this, the identity matrix corresponding to the pivot variables, uh, this matrix F and the zeros. And what I have done is I put explicitly the dimensionality of its matrix, okay? 
remember um, uh, this uh, this uh, total matrix R right is uh, is uh, uh, similar to my original matrix A that is m times n okay so this matrix has to be of the total dimensionality m times n uh, so uh, the uh, I uh, corresponds to independent rows and pivot columns so it's R by R and then uh, the uh, matrix F uh, has R rows and corresponds, corresponds to the free variables, and I have N minus R free variables because you can see N minus R, R plus R has to give me N, right? Because uh, uh, this whole matrix has to be M by N, okay? So anyways, you can look at the, at the magnitudes of uh, these matrices and you will see that they uh, do... Uh, uh, match very well, okay, with the original system of equations and also the splitting of variables to pivot variables identified by independent columns uh, uh, and rows, and that's my rank of the matrix, uh, uh, R, and uh, then uh, uh, F identified also by N minus R, that is uh, the uh, number of uh, the free variables. Okay, so... Uh, uh, let's finish this thing up, right? So we need to compute the null space of A, which is the same as the null space of R. So you need to find the solutions to Rx equal to zero, right? So I'm claiming, um, uh, let me do the following thing. I'm going to compute all the solutions, all the spatial solutions of the null space all together in a matrix form, and I'm going to call this matrix uh, N, so n will be a, a, a vector, I mean, it will be a matrix that has dimensionality n times n minus r. Remember, my null space vectors, all right, they are in rn, so that's why this is n there. And how many of those do I have? I have n minus r, okay? So this vector n contains each, the columns of this vector are my special solutions, each of them being a solution an independent solution to the null space problem, uh, Rx equal to zero, okay? So again, I just put all of the solutions together in some matrix for n. So I want to solve this problem, R times n equal to zero, and I give you uh, the uh, dimensionality so you can check that uh, my calculations are consistent. So you know what? I can write directly the solution to this problem uh, by just looking at uh, the matrix R and the solution N uh, that contains, again, my uh, free, um, uh, my, uh, my special solutions to the null space problem is uh, uh, minus F and I, where this particular I has dimensionality N minus R times N minus R. So if you go back to our particular uh, problem, that we worked before, uh, this was the matrix F we had, and you notice to get a special solution, you have to reverse the sign. So this two, zero minus two, two has become now minus two, zero, two minus two, and this matrix uh, N in our problem, uh, it was equal to four, R is equal to two, so this is two by two unit matrix. So you know what? We already have identified this, this column vectors, are the special vectors that we saw before, and somehow we managed to do this automatically by looking at this row echelon matrix and concluding that the solutions uh, to the null space problem is minus F and I. You can see, right, if you take this matrix R, this block matrix R, and you multiply with this block matrix N, you will get I times this F, so you get F, and then you will get F times I, which is F. So minus F and F gives you zero, okay? And from the other partition, zero, zero times minus F and I will also give you zeros. So really, you do get the solution to the null space problem, and that solution is immediately readable from the R matrix by uh, putting this unit matrix here and minus F on the top, and you are done. I mean, this is the solution to the null space problem, okay? And um, the, 
this matrix that I have uh, 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 here, just so we can put uh, things in perspective, right? This identity matrix in the vector n of dimensions n minus r to n minus uh, r is basically uh, the trick that we used before in setting some of the free variables equal to one and all the rest of the free variables equal to zero. This is exactly what I have done with this matrix, right? This is one and zero, this is one and zero, okay? And what is the, from where is the F matrix results? From where is it coming? The F matrix, uh, if I can go back, this F matrix comes by setting the free variables and then solving uh, my system of equations say x equal to zero for the pivot variables. So it comes really by uh, back substitution, right? And back substitution, and you can actually see this uh, uh, directly if you take uh, this matrix R and you write the null space problem as I times F, all right, times the pivot uh, uh, variables and the free variables, because you remember I arranged them in that order, and you put this equal to zero because you're looking at the solution to the null space problem, then you can see uh, I times X pivot gives you the pivot variables. Uh, uh, here you have plus F times X, the free variables. So minus F times X, the free variables. That's where the minus F comes, all right? It really comes by solving the pivot variables by back substitution using this matrix F, okay? The nice thing is uh, this matrix F came directly uh, in this uh, row reduce echelon form. So by just changing the signs, and we can immediately write the spatial solutions to the null space uh, directly. Effectively, we have done all the elimination steps needed uh, that allow us to do this uh, directly without uh, any extra effort. Okay, so let me uh, finish with one more example. You have to do a few more examples to be able to identify this uh, as uh, an obvious process, and obviously you have to work on this in uh, the Homer problem. So here is a four by three uh, metrics. If you get rid of all the twos by elimination, you get something like that. Obviously this row, uh, uh, it was uh, a linear uh, combination of the previous row. You can see two times the first row gives you row two. So we're going to have to put it, uh, uh, we're going to have to do row exchange, okay? Uh, so we're going to uh, uh, put this zero to two as the second row, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, uh, you know, uh, do uh, elimination of the fourth row. Okay, if you subtract uh, two times the second row from the fourth, uh, the fourth row will also disappear, okay? So in uh, principle, you can see that the, uh, the fourth row is a linear combination of the first two rows, um, okay? And uh, effectively, um, if you want to get the R matrix, what you need to do is get rid of this two now. How do you do this? Subtract. Uh, from the first row, the second row. So this will give you zero there, and three minus two will give you one. And uh, what do you do in the second row? You divide by two to make the pivot equal to one. So you have two pivot columns, okay, and one free column. And I'm going to use directly the, uh, the formula that I gave you before so that you can start uh, using it. Uh, you remember, uh, so in our case, uh, N was the matrix of the spatial vectors that their solutions to the null space problem. Here, there is only one spatial solution. And uh, what do I need to do? I need to use minus F. So there is my F, one and one. So minus F gives you minus one, minus one. And then the identity matrix, because this is just a vector, is the number one, okay? And uh, immediately you can appreciate, right, that this thing tells you that the uh, third column is the sum of the first two row, I mean two columns. Isn't it the case, right? Three is one plus two, six is two plus four, eight is two plus six, and um, uh, what has happened here? Um, uh, do we have a mistake here somewhere? Um, uh, so you may want to check it, okay? So uh, it seems to me 
the uh, uh, maybe this element here is supposed to be nine, okay? Uh, no, maybe seven. Uh, so check it up, uh, okay? So um, uh, uh, and I will correct actually in the slides before posting to verify that this number here uh, is the correct number. But uh, uh, looking at the solution, if this is the correct R matrix, basically the sum of the first two columns have to give you uh, the uh, third column. And I can see already this is happening with the first three elements. So uh, somehow uh, we're missing something uh, on, uh, on, the, on the last um, uh, element, on the last row of the matrix uh, A. Okay, so there must be some typo there. All right, uh, so the null space is a line in this particular problem that is passing through uh, uh, minus one, minus one, and, uh, and uh, one. Okay, so um, if uh, I mentioned this before, if we have n greater than m, uh, since the rank of the matrix is at most m, all right, so obviously we're going to have n minus r uh, free variables, okay, uh, and uh, so uh, we have non-zero solutions to the null space problem. So we have special uh, uh, solutions that you need to calculate with the scheme that uh, I gave you. Okay. So um, uh, I don't see anything special here. The matrix R already we said it identifies the independent columns. Uh, it also identifies. Uh, what rows are, uh, it effectively eliminates all the rows that they were combinations of previous rows. That's where all the zeros that we saw in the examples go. Uh, uh, the matrix R was special. Uh, the pivots were equal to one, and we put zero above the pivots uh, to bring it to that form because that was convenient to identify the special null space vectors. Uh, the rank of the uh, matrix A is really the number of the pivots in the matrix uh, R that we get. So you can actually use this as an equivalent definition to the rank that we have seen many, many times through these lectures. You know, we have said the number of independent rows, the number of independent columns. Now we see it to actually be the number of pivots. Okay, so that's all the rank R of the matrix. And um, we have seen that uh, uh, AEX equal to zero has an N minus uh, R special uh, solutions. Uh, uh, and we will see that effectively this N minus R special solutions actually define the basis for the null space. And N minus R is the dimensionality uh, of, the, of the null space. So let me just finish because it has been uh, a long uh, lecture. Uh, uh, let me just finish with uh, a few words about uh, the rank with the matrix. So we started with the matrix M uh, times uh, uh, N, and we said that uh, this is not the true size of the matrix, right? True size of a matrix is, a, is, a, is the size that has accounted for uh, rows that are uh, dependent and columns that are dependent. So the true size of the matrix is really uh, the rank of the matrix as we have seen it. Uh, okay, so, uh, and the rank of the matrix in this particular lecture was defined as the number of the pivots in this row uh, reduce uh, echelon uh, matrix R that uh, we defined by uh, row combinations of the original matrix uh, uh, A. Okay. Um, so we uh, so <coughs> so for this particular matrix uh, A that uh, you see there, uh, we uh, the row echelon uh, uh, form is uh, shown in um, in uh, uh, in the right. So uh, we have um, uh, two columns uh, that are the pivot columns, and we have uh, uh, two columns that they are uh, uh, identify the free columns, they identify the free variables. Uh, reminder again, you can see uh, column three is really two times column one. You can uh, see it again if uh, you can check that I've not done another type of mistake here. And also you can see, uh, let's check this, that column four is 
three times column one, okay, uh, and um, um, three times column one, and uh, uh, and uh, plus column two, all right. So three times plus one four, three times plus two five, three plus three six. So since we type this, uh, I type this uh, question uh, correctly. Okay, so uh, so R identifies all the dependencies and effectively identifies the true dimensionality of the matrix and the true dimensionality, the rank of the matrix is the number of the pivots. In this case, uh, the rank of this matrix is, uh, is equal uh, to two. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, you know, so this dependencies uh, again. You, you know, in a much larger uh, matrix, you don't have to uh, visually identify them. Uh, this uh, row reduce echelon form is uh, the process that does this for you, and uh, the dependencies you remember uh, are identified directly by the uh, the matrix that corresponds to the free variables inside uh, R, but with reversal of the signs. So, for example, um, if uh, you uh, set one, the third free variable, all right, uh, uh, so we are looking at the third free variable. You can see this is uh, uh, two, so you're going to have uh, minus two, okay, uh, of the first column plus the, uh, uh, so minus two of this, uh, plus two of that will give you zero. And similarly, you will put a minus three. Uh, uh, actually, let's check this one. So if you put the fourth variable equal to one, okay, and the third variable equal to zero, uh, let me see if you take minus three, the first column, uh, minus three, the first column, okay, plus three will give you zero, nice. And then we have minus three, so minus three here, um, and um, uh, let me see. So no, I'm sorry, wrong. Uh, so you remember we multiply R times S2. So we will have one times minus one. So uh, minus one plus one equal to zero. So we're good. Okay. So we're good. Uh, so effectively the, uh, uh, the combinations uh, that define uh, column four is basically three times column one uh, plus uh, 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 column two, as I indicate uh, in the slide here. All right. Um, let me say a little bit of word about uh, uh, rank one matrices. I remind you, we have seen these matrices uh, before. Uh, when I was talking, I think, on um, uh, maybe uh, lecture five about uh, uh, multiplication, of a column vector with a row vector, uh, we said that those matrices, all columns of the resulting matrix are uh, uh, basically uh, uh, dependent um, on uh, the column uh, vector that you started with. And all rows are multiples basically of the row vector that you started with. And we said at the time that we will see later on that all these matrices uh, have uh, rank one. So let's revisit this. So here is a rank one matrix. Okay, if you do uh, row elimination of this matrix, uh, if uh, all the numbers are correct, basically you can see there is only one pivot element. So the rank of this matrix is one. But maybe uh, when you look at this, you may ask, uh, but uh, uh, but you say, well, you know, but I don't see this matrix uh, A. Uh, written as uh, a product of a column uh, and a row vector the way we introduce it in this earlier lecture. Well, that uh, may not be obvious, but look at that. Uh, you know, all the columns are multiples of columns, uh, the, the column one to three, right? This is three times column uh, one, and this is 10 times column one. So if you take this vector u, all right, and uh, then uh, let's see, um, uh, uh, you know, what multiples of column one are the different columns. So the first column is obviously one. The second is three. 
and the last is 10. If I put these numbers 1, 3, and 10 as a row vector, then I get the familiar uh, 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 UV transpose form of the row 1 matrices that uh, we had seen uh, before. And you can appreciate now that these matrices basically indeed have uh, rank 1 because when you do uh, row reduction, you actually identify only one uh, pivot element, as you see here in, um, in, uh, um, uh, in the equation. Uh, now, uh, if somebody asks you, what is the null space of um, a row one uh, uh, matrix? Uh, so let's compute that, all right? So let's say we have a matrix row mark rank one, and um, uh, we want to find the null space of that. So the null space by definition is the vector sec so that AX equal to zero. So uh, if you set A equal UV transpose X equal to zero, V transpose X is uh, a scalar. So effectively, the vector sec that define the null space are the vectors that they are perpendicular to the vector V. Okay, so uh, effectively, uh, the null space is a plane, all right? It's a plane that is perpendicular uh, to the vector uh, to the vector v. And uh, uh, remember, v defines the row space because every vector, uh, every row, is is uh, basically parallel to uh, to v. Okay. Remember, every column, uh, it's um, uh, it's a repetition times some scalar, and the same is true with uh, the rows. So uh, the row space basically is generated by this vector v, okay? So here we get something wonderful that basically says the row space is a line and the null space is the perpendicular plane, okay? Uh, now I, I, I understand, uh, I haven't explicitly defined what a row space here is, right? But you can extrapolate the same way we define the columns uh, the columns as a sub, you know, as a subspace of R M. The rows now are uh, vectors in R N. So the row space is basically the space generated by taking linear combinations of the rows. And in our case, the rows are all uh, generated by multiples of the vector v. So the row space in this case is one. Now uh, you may want to start thinking deeply here what the implication is, but you notice the row space is line. So it has, um, um, you know, uh, effectively, I can say dimensionality one, and we will see this again. And then the null space is the perpendicular plane that is dimensionality two. So the two spaces together, they are orthogonal, all right? And together, they are actually form the whole of our cube. Uh, this is something extremely important that uh, we would see later on, right? That uh, um, uh, somehow we are uh, able to take the whole of uh, uh, the space, uh, uh, you know, Rn and uh, write it in uh, terms of uh, the row space and in terms of the null space that in this case, um, I can say they complement each other because together they give you the whole space, okay? So in our case, the row space here is a line, and the null space is the perpendicular plane to, uh, to this line. Um, you can talk about uh, the ranks of um, many different matrices. So here I show you uh, four different um, matrices, two by three, two by two, two by one, and a matrix with only one element. And uh, you can appreciate that uh, if you do the uh, reduce row echelon uh, form, all these matrices have only one pivot, okay? So, um, uh, so in, in, you know, uh, so R in this particular uh, case is equal to, uh, to one. And I remind you that uh, AU, uh, AU and R, right, in the process, they're all obtained through uh, linear combination of rows. So, uh, if you define the rank with uh, directly in terms uh, of the elements of A or of U or of R, it's the same thing, but using the R matrix 
directly tells you what the rank of the matrix is because you basically count the number of pivots. And in this case, the number of pivots is uh, one, so the rank is equal to one. And uh, uh, as a reminder, if uh, the rank is, um, is R, the, um, uh, the rank is the number of uh, independent rows, is also the ranks of the independent columns. And in the language that we will use in a follow-up lecture, uh, R is the dimension of the column space. And it's actually the dimension of the row space. And um, uh, in our case, uh, we can pull this further and say that um, N minus R is the dimension of the null space. Think, uh, so I can close this lecture, this dimensionality defines how many independent vectors in that space do you need uh, to define every other vector? So what's the maximum number of independent vectors that you need? That's what we call dimension. So you remember when we manipulated the null space, we look on how many independent vectors, special vectors can I define the null space? That's my definition of the dimensionality of that null space, okay? So N minus R is the dimension of the null space. Okay, so um, there is a lot of information, so hopefully you can come back and uh, hear this lecture and follow the examples and correct any mistakes that you see uh, in the slides. And um, in uh, the next lecture, we're going to try to uh, continue. And uh, since we know how to compute the solution of the null space, we will try to complete the problem of computing the most general solution of AX equal B for any metric A, okay? So we will basically combine particular solutions of AX equal B with the solutions of the null space to come up with a general solution of AX equal uh, B, okay? And uh, so we will do this in a follow-up lecture. Uh, that's all for today, uh, and uh, we will uh, talk in, uh, uh, in a few days again. Bye.